Hello and welcome to a special edition of Statewide. I'm Jana McGuire. Last year, 400 Nebraska Army National Guard soldiers were keeping the peace in war-torn Bosnia. Called Task Force Huskers, they were part of the NATO-led international peacekeeping force that's been in place since 1995. This in the aftermath of a brutal conflict that claimed the lives of 250,000 men, women and children many killed in the name of ethnic cleansing. Statewide's Mike Tobias was part of a small delegation that visited the troops in Bosnia and toured the war-torn country. He joins us now with a look back at the soldiers, their mission, and Bosnia's future. Mike? Yeah, thanks, Jenna. For about three days, we had amazing access into the work and lives of the soldiers of Task Force Huskers. First, we take you on patrol in northern Bosnia for a first-hand look at peacekeeping and see how Nebraska soldiers used their wisdom more than their weapons. Uh, yeah, it'll be new territory for us, and that's always interesting, talking to new people, getting to know new people. Yeah, should be uh, interesting. Looks like they're getting ready to move. Every morning, patrols leave Camp McGovern, home to most of the soldiers in Task Force Huskers. The six-ton armed Humvees head into the rolling hills, carrying Nebraskans from many different walks of life, auto mechanics, salesmen, loan officers, and college students. Now they're peacekeepers in war-torn northern Bosnia. The patrols constantly pass reminders of the bloodiest European war since World War II. As a soldier here, um, we go to the villages, we go to the towns, we stop in the schools. We want people to know that um, you know, we want a safe and secure environment. We're, we're encouraging economic development, political development. We want people to progress to a point where you know, everyone can live in the harmony with one another. This patrol is working a new area. It used to be the responsibility of Russian soldiers who've now left S-4. In the small town of Siegenluk, they're greeted by kids who know the soldiers are armed with handfuls of huge Tootsie Rolls. They're also greeted by Zivad Muzik, a Muslim and former major in the Bosnian army who fought against the Serbs during the war. Are there any problems in the area? There have been some things happening in the past, but right now all three sides are getting along good and everything's back to normal. Siegenluk sits near the zone of separation, the line drawn to end the war and divide the country into Serb and Muslim Croat held territories. Fighting here was fierce. War wounds still mark the side of Mujik's house. Artillery pieces are falling all around on the road here and it actually hit the house. It looked much worse than it looks now, but they repaired it. The, big, uh, the back part of the house was, uh, part of it was blown away actually. It's Mujik's day off from work, so he invites the soldiers to drink strong Bosnian coffee under his vine-covered trellis. It's an opportunity for the peacekeepers to learn about conditions and concerns in the village. Actually, they found a mortar round the other day, mm -hmm. and they reported it to the police, but it hasn't been moved yet. It's still okay. up on the hill. We'll stop back in uh, in the next week sometime to see if uh, the police have picked it up, and if they haven't uh, haven't picked it up, we'll uh, we'll try call and get someone maybe that can uh, can take care of it. Before they leave, Mujik goes to his garage and brings a freshly washed gift to the soldiers. What is that? It's a uh, light anti-tank weapon. <laughs> um, is it a light anti-tank? Okay, just tell him what we'll do is um, we have our uh, explosives team that mm -hmm. comes and picks those up. Mm -hmm. we, we, this, this patrol can't take it because they don't let us because we don't have the right kind of vehicle. Mm -hmm. As a neighbor serves the soldiers fresh strawberries, Mujik serves them ammunition and grenades stored in his garage. Oh, he already said he used to be in the military, yeah, and he said much uh, more stuff, but uh, he, he turned most of it in a long time ago, and he just, wa or he just waited for a good occasion to get, to get rid of the rest. Yeah. Well, we don't want to do it uh, in there, where, uh, in the town like that. One, it's just a little bit safer if something happened out here and nothing happens this way. But mostly because... Um, they turn in weapons and ammunition under the conditions of uh, anonymity. They want to remain anonymous and we don't want to advertise to all their neighbors that they've been holding illegal grenades for five years. 683 rounds of 7.62, three rounds of 12.7 millimeter, 150 caliber round, and 18 hand grenades. Hildebrand, a full-time guardsman, says this was just another morning on patrol. 
it's it's very typical in the aspect of um, somebody talking to you, inviting you in, coffee, juice. Um, the conversations typically somewhat the same. That guy was a little more educated than your average citizen, I think. You know, after they get to know you, I guess it was typical in the fact that somebody will turn in something, whether it be a few rounds that they found or, or a hand grenade or try to turn in a bunch of weapons. Um, it's, it's really kind of unbelievable. Task Force Huskers has focused on disarming Bosnia since they took over peacekeeping in this area in February. That same week, two local boys were killed playing with a hand grenade. That type of thing you're just not ready for. So one of the things that we said we were going to make sure we were successful at is getting the message out that hand grenades and assault rifles and military weapons don't belong in the homes, particularly where they've got these young children. In downtown Birchco, a city about the size of Grand Island near Camp McGovern, soldiers set up a weapons collection point. It's part of a project called Harvest Rewards. Bosnians exchange guns and munitions for raffle tickets. Five tickets for a weapon, three for each grenade, one for 20 rounds of ammo. The raffle winner got a new car. We got, uh, we got like 13 hand grenades in here of different types. We got some concussions, some fragmentation. Uh, we even got one of these uh, they call a helmet knocker today. When you've got people rolling up in their little Volkswagen Gulfs, drop, pulling the stuff out of their back seats to give it to you, it's just, just blows your mind to think that they have this stuff in their house. There are lighter sides to being on patrol. It's field day at the school in Gornjazovic. First through eighth grade students celebrate the last day of school with a festival. I am very happy because I see you here. Principal Thomas Slovandruš invited Task Force Huskers soldiers to the festival. In the school's cafeteria, they snack on meat and cheese and listen to the educator talk about conditions at the mostly Croat school. And here we try to make things better for kids, but right now it's it's pretty hard. Soldiers visit schools regularly. Joining volleyball, soccer, and basketball games helps build relationships with the next generation of Bosnians. We got our butts kicked <laughs> by like eighth and ninth graders, <laughs> or eighth and nine-year-olds. <laughs> People are great around here. They don't treat us any different than if we were in America. So like I said, it's, it's, it's a really good place to be. The kids are probably the friendliest. They always come up to us, wave, try to talk, because they have English in schools now. <laughs> Soldiers get to know a lot of these kids at school. During the school year, they visit classrooms, teaching them to recognize and stay away from landmines and unexploded ordnance. These deadly remnants of war are everywhere in Bosnia. That includes this road not far from a busy shopping area. Uh, we were told the road had been cleared, but as you can see, that stake does mark a mine. There are more than a million known landmines left in Bosnia and there's no mapping done to these minefields, so we don't know how they put them in, if they're buried, if they're on top, if they're hanging from trees, and we can't detect them. As you can see, the foliage that's out there almost makes it virtually impossible to go in and clean. You know, it's just very hard work to do. So, but we try to find them. Specialist Matthew Severin spots a UXO, an exploded ordnance, hidden in the grass. They'll call in specially trained engineers to deal with it. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It could be homemade for sure. It looks like a UXO just missing the detonator or the fuse, whatever you'd like to call it. Mainly the fuse is what it's called. Getting around may pose the greatest challenge and danger for soldiers on patrol. Many Bosnian roads are in horrible shape. There's a lot of unimproved roads that get to a lot of the... Uh, majority of the rural population so it requires us to go off the road quite a bit and uh, sometimes it can be uh, almost an adventure in itself just the, just the driving. High-tech GPS technology inside the Humvees doesn't help when a mapped road suddenly ends at a farmer's fence. Then there are Bosnian drivers. This white van trying to pass Humvees barely avoids a head-on collision. Accidents are common on these narrow roads. You'll be driving and you'll have a Mercedes buzz by you at a 
you know, 100 kilometers an hour and then you'll come up upon a, a horse and cart and then there'll be people walking down the middle of the road and then you'll have these little, look like uh, lawnmower engines, people sitting on a lawnmower pulling a trailer and uh, it's, it's very difficult to drive when you have all those different type of conditions. One accident claimed the life of a soldier in July. 21-year-old specialist Blake Kelly was killed on patrol when his Humvee was hit by an oncoming truck. 